good morning today i am going to discuss some of the topics from the subject computer fundamental which is a common paper for most of the undergraduate courses in different universities of karnataka the first session i am going to cover what is a computer what is its role in the present scenario how it differ from the other electronic equipments next we will take up what are the different characteristics of a digital computer or what are the features of a computer next history of computer here i will cover the evolution of computers how the present computer has come into picture what are the major milestone or what are the major changes that has taken place in the field of computer science and the classification of the computer here i will cover how the computers are classified into different types based on the various parameters next the applications of computers in various field how the computer has helped in different fields finally a block diagram of the computer what are the different functional unit how these units interact with each other in achieving a particular functionality let's start with a simple question what is a computer a computer is a fast calculating electronic device which accept input known as data process the data according to set of rules or instruction and finally produce the output these set of instructions given to the computer to perform a specific task is called as a program a computer is basically a data processor data processing is one activity where the input is given is the data the computer process the input and finally data is nothing but raw facts or figures which does not possess any meaning at all then finally data has to be converted into a useful output which possess some meaning the conversion of data into information we call it as a data processing computer basically transforms raw data into a meaningful output known as information to convert data into information computer must be given specific set of instructions these set of instruction we call it as a program the program tells the computer how to transform the data into information unlike most of the other electronic equipments for example you take a microwave oven it is designed for one specific application that is to heat a food items similarly if you consider a refrigerator it is designed for keeping your food item cool whereas computer is not designed for any one specific application it is a multi function electronic device same computer can be used for varieties of application we can use the computer to play a game of chess we can use a computer to prepare the salary slip of an employee or we can use the computer to prepare the marks card of a student in the university so that means the single device can do multi function and the computer can perform this function by executing the set of instruction called as a program what are the characteristics or the features of computer how a computer differs from other electronic equipments a computer is controlled by a program we can make the computer to do anything for us it may be for playing a game of chess or we can use a computer for some programming purpose or we can use the computer to watch a movie whatever it may be but it has to be written a proper program for every task the program differs that means computer carry out operations according to the set of instruction as i told earlier this set of instruction is known as a program for every one specific task a program is different 
a computer unlike human being cannot understand everything. A computer can understand only two specific digits, one is 0, another one is 1. You see, just by understanding these two simple symbols like 0 and 1, it is doing wonders in the world. Next one is the storage capability of a computer. We can store huge amount of data and information in its memory. The memory could be the secondary memory. Speed. No human being can match the speed of a computer. Computer can do billions of operation in just one second. Nowadays, the speed of the computer is not even expressed in terms of second, it is in nanoseconds, etc. Uh, nanosecond, millisecond, etc. Speed is not the only criteria where the people prefer computers. Computer can process the data very accurately at the same time, very quickly also. So, it is a combination of both speed and accuracy which makes the computer different from a human being. A computer can work for long duration without feeling tired. In between, computer never asks for any break. Probably this tendency is missing in human being. Human being after working continuously for 2 or 3 hours, we in between we require some break, but that feel that thing is not there in computers. Most of the time, the failure in the result is not due to the mistakes of the computer. Computer will never make any mis mistake because it just obeys the instruction given by the program user. This set of instruction as I told earlier, it is called as a program. Most of the time, the failure from the computer is due to the human errors. If you mistake, if you commit some mistake while writing the program or if you commit some mistake while giving the input to the program, if anything wrong in these two, then naturally the result from the computer is also wrong. So, computer, the, the reason is not the, not from the computer, but because of the human errors. Computers can be used for varieties of application. We can use the computers in medicine, education, entertainment, simulation modeling, business, R&D, that is research and development, industry. I have mentioned only some few areas. The computers are used in almost every walks of our life. When you compare the amount of work you extract from a computer with the amount of money you have invested on the computer, probably you will get much more than what you have invested. So, the ratio of cost to performance is higher in the case of computers. All these points are the positive aspects of the computer or the benefits of a computer, but computer has one drawback, it lacks intelligence and no common sense. Most of the time, it just obeys the instruction given by the programmer. It does not have the capability to think on its own and take some decisions. If you write a program telling that 2 plus 3 equal to 4, computer also just simply obeys 2 plus 3 equal to 4. It will never think whether 2 plus 3 is 5 or 4, that common sense is not there for computers. Next, we will study what are the major milestone or major development in the field of computer science, how the present computer has developed, what is the evolution of computers. The history of the computing can be dated back to almost 500 BC before Christ. The first calculating device called Abacus was developed by Chinese in 500 BC itself. In the year 1642, a French mathematician by the name Blaise Pascal invented a machine called numerical wheel calculator 
but this machine has the capability of doing only addition operation that means it has the limited capability. In the year 1694 another scientist by the name Leibniz he devised an another machine which is much better than the machine design designed by the Blaise Pascal and this machine was capable of doing both addition and multiplication. In the year 1822 Charles Babbage he developed two machines one is called as an analytical engine the other one is the difference engine. The modern computer is based on the model designed by Charles Babbage that is the reason we regard him as the father of the modern computer. In the year 1848 the person by the name George Boulay developed an algebra which is based on binary number system that means that algebra is based on only two digits called 0 and 1 and that algebra provides the mathematical foundation for the modern digital computer all our present computer works on the principle developed by the uh, works on the mathematical foundation given by the George Boulay. In the year 1890 Hollerith developed a machine which can tabulate the entire American census data. In 1944 a first computer by the name electronic numerical integrator and computer short form as ENIAC was developed which is considered under the first generation of the computer I will come to the generation of the computer in my subsequent slides. In 1945 electronic discrete variable automatic computer the short form the abbreviated as EDVAC was developed. In 1951 universal automatic computer also called as UNIVAC was developed. In the year 1969 a type of networks which is helps in transmitting the defense document from one place to another place within an American defense organization. So, that network they named it as ARPANET actually this forms the basis of our present internet. Internet is based on the technology or the model of the ARPANET. In 1969 a very powerful operating system called Unix was developed. That operating system was mainly developed for mini computer. Again, I will come to the classification of the computer or the types of computer in my remaining slides. In the year 1978, another operating system called disk operating system developed especially for a personal computer or the micro computer. In the year 1989, one more operating system even now we are using that operating system called windows. The main advantage of unix and sorry windows operating system over unix and dos is in the case of uni windows the user need not remember any commands. He can do all the works in the computer with the help of small pictures these pictures are called as icons and it is based on graphical user interface that means the interface between the computer and the user is through certain pictures. In the year 2001 one more operating system it is an another flavor of Unix operating system called Linux was developed. The development in the field of computer science can be classified into five distinct levels. Each level is an improvement over the previous level. Each level resulted in the development of new component resulted in the development of new hardware, new memory device, new storage device etcetera. And each generation roughly spans about 10 years for example, the first generation spans a period of 1945 to 1954, the second generation 1955 to 1964, third generation 1965 to 
1974 the fourth generation from 1975 to 1984 the fifth generation or the present generation it started in the year 1985 and still we are in the same generation the basic difference among all these generation is what is the principal component used in constructing the computer let us study in detail the different generations of computers the first generation the main components were vacuum tubes the size of the vacuum tube is quite large and the first generation computer that when they designed they have used almost 18000 vacuum tubes then you can think about the size of the computer one computer construction took almost 18000 vacuum tubes for this reason they are very very expensive they are very large in size they require more space and the computer cannot be easily transferred from one place to another place because it's not possible to ship all the 18000 vacuum tubes from one place to another place and the entire computer was kept in one single room in the first generation the main storage was magnetic drum for input and output operation nowadays for input operation we are using keyboard and for output we are using either a monitor or a printer but in the first generation punched cards were used both for input and output the first generation computers were very very slow probably they were doing 10 to they are able to carry out 10 to 12 instruction per second and each vacuum tube generated heat then if the all the 18000 start generating heat you think about the total amount of heat that is generated it generate a lot of heat and the entire computer has to be kept in a special room because the size was too big and for most of the uh, important operation you cannot depends on the computer at that time because there is a chance of the vacuum tubes breaking down every now and then some of the computers developed during the first generations are edvac eniac i already given the definition of those two in my previous slides the second generation is an improvement over the first generation in the second generation the vacuum tubes were replaced by a semiconducting device called as a transistor the size of the transistor is very much less when compared to the size of the vacuum tubes the naturally the size of the computer is also drastically reduced the second generation computers were small in size the heat generated from the transistor is very much less when compared to the heat generated from the vacuum tubes here the speed of the computer or the speed of the your processor is measured in microseconds whereas in the case of first generation it was measured in the milliseconds the primary storage magnetic drums which were used in the first generations were replaced by core memory and when the second generation some secondary storage device like magnetic tapes and magnetic disk were developed during this period or this generation has given rise to some of the high level languages like fortran cobol pl1 etc the companies which manufactured the second generation computers were ibm that stand for international business machine id ibm 1501 ibm 1620 pdp ICT 1300 etc the third generation is a further improvement over the first two generations the third generation even transistors were replaced by small circuits called integrated circuits or ICs within the place of one IC we can fabricate 
some 10 to, we can keep some 10 to 20 transistors and the size was again reduced because the size of the IC itself is very much less when compared to the size of the vacuum tube or the transistors. In the first two generations most of the computer operations were done by the human beings, but when it comes to third generation that responsibility was taken over by a powerful program called operating system. The third generation computers were much faster, much powerful, more reliable, very small in size and the cost is also very much less when compared to the second generation computers. The third generation give, again give rise to some more high level languages like Fortran 4 etc. During this period in uh, some concept like database systems like DBA 3 plus and spreadsheets were developed. I will, again I will take these two things in my remaining slides. Here the processor speed was measured in nanoseconds and this type of computer are not designed for any one particular application, they are more general in nature, same computers can be used for varieties of applications. Some of the examples of third generation systems were IBM 360, ICL 1900 etc. The fourth generation, the small scale ICs were replaced by large scale ICs. Within one IC, we can fabricate more than 100 transistors. The core memory was replaced by secondary memory. The secondary memory cost was very much less when compared to the cost of the core memory. The fourth generation computer has given rise to microcomputers, microprocessors, etc. They are very, very portable. This generation has given rise to some more high level languages like Pascal, C, etc. The concept like distributed system. Sometimes what happens is when the task is too big, it is not possible to complete that work in one single machine. So, what you have to do is you break the task into sub task, execute each of the sub task in different different computers. Then what happens is you can do more work in the same available time and graphics oriented systems are also developed because nowadays computers are used for entertainment purpose also high speed and very large capacity secondary storage devices came into picture during this period. And the main result of the fourth generation computers were the personal computers or what you call it as a PC. The fifth generation is the present generation, but it is not yet fully developed and it is based on the knowledge base. The computer developed till the fourth generation are just the servants of the human being, whatever instruction human being is giving, it just understanding that instruction and doing the proper work. The instruction tells the computer what to do, how to do and when to do. But the fifth generation computer has the capability to think on its own with the help of the knowledge that is given induced by the user into the uh, computer memory. Some of the new concept developed during this period are parallel processing, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a branch where the computer is almost made to behave like a human being. Natural language processing. Computers nowadays are able to understand our own language like Canada, English, etc. And the main uh, uh, invention of this generation is the development of robots. How the computers are can be classified depending on the price or the cost, its storage capacity, its speed of working, computers are classified into four categories. One is microcomputer, mini computer, mainframe computer and supercomputers. This category, this classification is based on the above four parameters like cost, memory and speed. Based on what is the principle of working, computers are classified into a digital computer or an analog computer. Next depending on for what purpose it is designed, whether it is designed for a general application or it is designed for a specific task, they are classified into general purpose computers and special purpose computers. Let us take up the first category of classification that is micro, mini, mainframe and super computers. 
and we will study what are the characteristics of micro computer, mini, mainframe and super computers, we will take up one by one. Micro computer, out of all these four types of computer, the cheapest type of computer is micro computer, at the same time the speed is also less when compared to the other three types of computers. Micro computers are general purpose computer, that means the same computer can be used for varieties of tasks. We can use the computer to prepare the income tax statement of an employee or you can use it for some programming purpose like Pascal program, C program or you can use the computer to prepare the result sheet of all the students in the university, etc. But this type of computer are able to take care of one user at a time, that is why they are called as single user system. More than one person cannot work with the computer simultaneously. Micro computers are evolved due to the rapid advancement in semiconductor technology because of the advancement of ICs, etc. They are very cheap and micro computer can be easily carried from one place to another place, that is why they are highly portable. Example, personal computers, laptop, palm top, etc. So, now personal computers and reno, other one do karakram galen and madate, other than the features na, you are now discuss man. Personal computers are designed for single user. And the computer na, wabba manusha matra at a time use madake aukash galide. They are very cheap and portable. Micro personal computer the price of Hattu Saurupa in the Nalavatu Saurupa highest price. They are also called as micro computers. Even the computer the advantage in the market tally new Yavadalu and Hosa Sadhana purchase murder, printer ribodo, scanner ribodo, other than install murder decay, Yave over technicians than you carry Avashekate illa. You can install the software on your own. The categories of the computer which comes under the personal computer, so the micro computer sections are desktop. Now, all the use model do. Number table mein leda computers all desktop. It could be a notebooks, laptops, or a palm top. Palm top the hethre lagya thena kaiye lit kono work model do. Just like your mobile phones. This is the typical structure of a desktop computers. This is laptop. It's a notebook computers. Size no di. Kamy ag chik dag taide. This is a palm top computer. It's almost similar to your mobile phones. Next, a workstation is a type of desktop machines only. Idr speed o normal personal computer thi kintu hath patto hechi rite. Namma personal computer sali main operating system mo. Disk operating system or Windows operating system. Whereas in the case of workstation, the operating system we are using is Unix operating system. Workstation na obbaru bekaru use mod bodo, atwa group more than one person can use it. Idhar the speedo between a micro computer and a mini computer. If you are to madhi dalay adro speed rite. The some of the companies which manufactures workstations are IBM, Helvet Packard, Digital Equipment Corporation, etc. The next level is mini computer. This is micro computer, cost, price, speed, and the storage capacity is mini computers, micro computers. They are general purpose computers. That means, that computer you can use the computer. You can use the movie and program and salary slip and prepare the salary slip. So, this is one particular application design model. They are also multi-user system. More than one person can use the system and it support 10 to 100 users simultaneously and it basically runs on Unix operating system. Micro computer basically runs on disk operating system or Windows operating system. It 
it's a multi processing system the more than one processor is also there in your system some of the examples of mini computers are these ibm sun ultra wax machines etc ee one micro computer matto mini computer na ನೀವು ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೂ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಲೆಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಮೈನ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೈನ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ವಿಚ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ ಯಾವೇ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ನ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಯಾವಾಗ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋ ಟೈಮಲ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಮೈನ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈನ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ನ ನಾವು ಎಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ಲೂ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಅದರದೇ ಆದ ಒಂದು ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಕೋಣೆ ಇರಬೇಕು ಆ ಕೋಣೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಏರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನರ್ಸ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಆ ಕೋಣೆ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಗಿರಬೇಕು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆನ್ಸಿವ್ ಸೊ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಣ್ಣ ಪುಟ್ಟ ಕೆಲಸಗಳಿಗೆ ಮೈನ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದರದ್ದು ಸ್ಟೋರೇಜ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಟೂ ಬಿಗ್ and the speed was also too much when compared to micro computer and a mini computer these are the examples of main frame computers as the name indicates it's the fastest type of computer idr speed inna yava computer speed gu match madakagalla and super computers are used in ಸಮ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಯಾವ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ತೀರಾ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಟೈಮು ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂಥ ಒಂದು ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ನಾವು ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ನ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ವೆದರ್ ಫೋರ್ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಲೈಟ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕಂ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸರ್ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸಗಳನ್ನು ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸರ್ಸ್ನ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ and the memory capacity is 100 times more than a mini computer example cray system param ee param anadu india davare develop madira first super computer the structure of a super computer the classification of micro computer mini computer main frame computer and the super computer is based on speed cost the memory capacity etc but based on the working principle computers can be classified as either a digital computer or an analog computer the digital computer can understand specific digits ee computer ge kelave kelavu symbol gal matra artha agutte for example 0 athwa 1 but analog computers can model the behavior of the system with some physical property for example thermometer barometer they are all examples of analog computers digital computer works on the principle of counting whereas an analog computer works on the principle of measuring let us take up what are the applications of computers in various field vidha vidhavada kshetragalalli computer na balake yav tara irutte anadike you will take some example computers na we will you can use it in education office medicine industry entertainment satellite launching data processing engineering research and development i have mentioned only some few areas but it's very difficult to think of an application where computer is not used at all and it is very difficult to think of a day without the usage of computers computer na ee kshetragalalli use madadrinda efficiency jaasti agutte speed jaasti agutte matte sample moolugalana kadame use maadkondu we will get come to we will do more works so that this is we call it as an optimization in com- in business computers are used for data processing data processing alli input is data computer will process the input and gives out the output known as information uh, data processing ge datta samskarana kriye 
ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ಬರೋದು ದತ್ತ ಅದರಿಂದ ಔಟ್ಪುಟ್ ಬರೋದು ಮಾಹಿತಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟೈಪಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಲೆಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಯಾಟಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲೆಟರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ಔಟ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡೇಟಾ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಡೇಟಾ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಯುಯಲ್ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಯೂಸೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅನಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡೇಟಾ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೇಟಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಟ್ರೀವಿಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಇನ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಕೌಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಬಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಪೇರೋಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ದ ಸ್ಯಾಲರಿ ಪೇ ಸ್ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ವೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ industries computers are used in industries also suppose if you want to design a machine or if you want to design a product we can get the design of the product using a tool called computer aided design or computer aided drawing you design multiple pictures of the same machine keep on changing the parameter if a design suitable for your application means then we can go for constructing the real machine they are used for storing and monitoring the details of employees inventory control purchase control etc nowadays computers are used uh, with the help of computer industries people have created robots a uh, robots it can carry heavy loads from one machine one place to another place usage of the ind- computer in industry gives you so many advantage come industry galalli computer balakeyinda nimage sigabahodada prayojanagalu ee ide ide we can invent new methods of production it helps in using the available resources optimally you can come out with better quality of the products we can reduce the cost of production and we can design new methods efficient methods of storage and retrieval computer galu nama education nama shikshanadalli hage balasabodu ondu digital library most of the libraries nowadays they are computerized computerized library inda we can access the book we can search a book very fast e learning e learning is nothing but a method of learning a particular subject by sitting in one's own place new physical age yavade ond college ge hogi alli kaliyabekagida avashyakata illa nimma kootalle neevu computer mattu internet balakeyinda nimage bekada vishayagalanna nimma kootalle kootkondu neevu kalpkobodu news groups in internet the people interested in similar topics they can form a group and they can exchange their ideas most of the exams nowadays are paperless or online exams research alli most of the journals are nowadays available online these are the some of the applications of computers in entertainment and multimedia with the help of computer we can create virtual animals for example jurassic park jurassic the park one uh, movie nalli uh, dinosaurs dinosaur an animal ivaga illa adanna you computer sahayinda you can create we can create graphical effects most of the movies will have the graphical effects created with the help of computers image processing speech processing nowadays computer can understand uh, we can identify a human being by his voice and computers are used in most of the cartoon films and games for animation purpose for example tom and jerry they are used behind the scenes to edit film during production government gov- computers are used in many government organizations also like income tax tourism railway higher education especially for planning and control purpose e governance is nothing but usage of computers 
and internet in compute in the government office for better transparency efficiency and saving time these are the some of the examples of government project bhumi this is a project for obtaining the land records prism this is one e governance project developed from punjab government vetana idu namma sarkaraddu adu madlu salary prepare madodike use martidru hrms emis this is the e governance project of department of college of education in organization like ksrtc and railways computers are used for data processing operation especially for reservation applications these are the some of the applications of computers in healthcare or medicine computers are used to monitor the pulse rate the blood pressure and other vital organs of human body sometimes some experts are available in some far off places mean if you want to consult them you can consult them through video conference in hospitals they are used for recording and maintaining the patient details drug details and also for billing purpose next we will move on to how a typical computer works this is the block diagram of a digital computer it consists of five important units input unit memory unit alu arithmetic logic unit control unit and output unit these five units are interconnected like this input unit is connected to memory unit memory unit and alu are by direction connection and the memory unit is connected to output unit also let us take up what is the functions of these units in a computer what is the functions of each and every unit in the computer we'll study one by one input unit sends data and the program to the computer so the data and the program send from the input unit first go to the memory unit input unit acts as a communicative link between a computer and the user some of the examples of input units are keyboard card reader scanner mouse optical character recognizers etc different types of inputs can be sent through different input devices for example if you want to send numbers or a letters they can use your keyboard if you want to send an image image cannot be typed through keyboard in that case we can use a camera if you want to send a voice to the computer again you cannot send the voice to to the computer using your keyboard in that case you can use your mic so depending depending on the type of input you want to give it to the computer we can use different types of input devices these are the common input devices in a computer keyboard for sending numbers and text next scanners for sending pictures to the computer for giving picture as an input to the computer card readers mouse these are the some of the common input devices in a computer digital camera web camera for sending images or photo to the computer graphic tablets we can put your signature sometimes signature also can be given as an input to your computer next memory unit the data given by the user through the input device first goes to the memory unit
memory unit store data and instruction sent from the user to the through the input device for ALU. So, uh, the data and the instruction sent from the keyboard or the mouse should next goes to the memory unit. The memory unit stores the program, the result and the data. The memory unit is divided into number of locations, each location we call it as one cell in a computer, in a computer memory. Every cell has one unique number, that number we call it as the address of the memory cell. The memory cell can be identified by specifying the address of that cell. The storage capacity of the memory of a computer is expressed in terms of the units like megabytes, gigabytes, etc. Anyway, I will come to that one later. Basically, there are two types of memory units, one is a primary memory, the other one is a secondary memory. The primary, if you, if you simply say the word primary memory, it always refers to the primary memory. So, by default memory we mean always the primary memory, it is also called as the main memory. Primary memory is volatile in nature, whatever information you store it in the primary memory gets erased on the moment you switch off your computer. A primary memory the content power supply the computer off the complete content of the primary memory gets erased. The two examples of primary memory are one is random access memory or RAM, the other one is ROM or read only memory. The content of the primary memory next it has to pass to the arithmetic logic unit for doing some calculations. Arithmetic logic unit fetch data and instruction from the primary memory. Primary memory when compared to your secondary memory is very fast and at the same time it is very expensive also. Let us take up the first type of primary memory called random access memory or RAM. Why it is called RAM? In the case of random access memory, whether your data or the instruction is stored in first location or whether it is stored in tenth location or whether it is stored in hundredth location, the time to access the information remains the same. It never depends on in which location your data is stored. So, you can directly go to tenth location, from the tenth location you can go to hundredth location from the 100th location you come back to 50th location, the time remains the same. We can write our own data into the RAM, that process we call it as writing or whatever content that is stored in your RAM, we can extract it also that is called as a reading operation. RAM is available for the user for storing both his program and the data, but the problem in the case of random access memory is the content of the RAM gets erased on the moment you switch off your computer. So, once you switch off your uh, computer, the information of the RAM you cannot get it back. So, before switching off you have to transfer it into some other memory that process is called as saving that will take up later. So, in the first session we have covered the basics of computers, some of the applications of computers, the categories of the computer and how the computers can be classified based on different parameters. In the next session I will take up different types of secondary memory, different types of primary memory etcetera. Thank you.